All right. Now we shall we are going to discuss about the superficial floor area method. Uh, the superficial floor area method is a method where we use the unit per meter squared to calculate the cost of a building. Uh, for example, if we constructed a building of five meters by five meters measured internally at a cost of uh, one million. For example, uh, now we want to construct another building in the same location of the same nature which measures 20 meters by 20 meters. We, are, we can be able to use the data from the previous building to know the cost of the building that we want to construct. Alright, so uh, if we want to do, uh, if we, what we did, the example I've given you, the 5 meters by 5 meters are... Uh, building at 1 million how many what is the area of 5 meters by 5 meters it's 25 meters squared remember the dimensions have to be measured internally uh, the superficial floor area method is the simplest method which gives an almost accurate cost when we are estimating uh, you remember the functional unit method it was used in a preliminary investigations just a rough figure all right, but the superficial flow method gives us a an accurate, almost accurate, uh, almost accurate calculation of the cost. Uh, now, uh, the key thing to 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 remember when you are doing the superficial flow area method is that the superficial flow method uh, we usually measure the building internally. Even if you're given the dimensions of the external walls. You have to deduct the walls so that you can be able to measure them internally. Also, you have to exempt any internal walls. You just ignore them or even the staircase if it's in the building. So, uh, the superficial floor unit method, floor area method. Uh -huh. This one, you can see the formula. It's the internal floor gloss area. You multiply by the construction cost over per meter squared. This data, we surely get it from previous buildings. The construction cost per meter square usually vary by region. For example, uh, if you're in eastern region of Kenya, uh, it, could be it could be varying with another region in the Mediterranean. Okay, it can even vary by location. If you're in Meru, it's not the same as if you're in Nairobi. Then it can vary from the type of building. Alright, so uh, the... Uh, we have an example here for calculating the floor area method. You're given this plan. This plan has the walls dimensions. It's 200. Then the internal dimensions of this building in terms of length is 24,000. Then the walls is 200. For the width, the walls is still 200. The internal dimensions of the width 10,000. And the walls of this side is 200. So you are told, consider the above residential units. Considering and consisting of three typical floors. So it has ground floor, first floor, second floor, where the unit rate per meter squared for smaller buildings is 35,000. So uh, if the, it costed one meter square to do, uh, one meter square, 35,000 to construct, how much is this building? You will take the internal dimensions. This is 224 meters by 10 meters. Uh -huh. Then you multiply by three floors. So the total floor areas for the three floors will be 70, 720 meters squared. So if, uh, if you want to know the cost of this building, which is 720 meters squared, and you're given that 5,000, you'll just take 720, you multiply by that 5,000. All right, now we are going to look at example two. It says, let us assume a house has recently been built at a cost of 2560000 this is purely the cost and does not include land, legal fees, and finance charges. The dimensions of ground floor and first floor are 10 meters by 8 meters measured within external walls. Right, so uh, you're told that the cost of this building is 2 million. 560,000 and it's purely the cost of the building it doesn't include large legal fees and finance charges of course this build these ones this cost for the land legal and finance charges do not relate directly with the building so we will just use this two million five hundred and sixty thousand you know that the first floor area is 10 meters by eight uh-huh 
So the first floor and the ground floor. So what is the area of the ground floor? It's 10 times 8. The first floor, 10 times 8. So first ground floor, the area is 80 meters squared. The first floor is 80 meters squared. Then you're told that the building costed uh, 2,560,000. So what is the cost per meter squared? You will take this, 2,560,000. Then you divide by the total area. 80 meters squared. Our last method of doing approximate estimation is the approximate quantities method. Remember, we have graduated from the functional units method, we came to the floor area method, we came to the cubic method, then we came to the story and closure method, and now finally we have the approximate quantities method. This one is usually done whenever when we have the drawings of the building and also some specification specification stating like concrete duration. Uh, the approximate quantities method is the most accurate method of approximate ex estimation. Remember the other one that we said is the BQ, which gives us an accurate estimation. But these ones which are just approximate, the most accurate method is the approximate quantities method. In this method, uh, a group of items are usually measured separately and are combined to provide a composite item of work. For example, if we go to the strip foundation, we shall go to the details of the strip foundation. Uh, for the strip foundation, we shall say like, we shall excavate the trench. Then below there, we shall do the blinding, the thin concrete layer. Then we shall do the strip foundation concrete. Then we shall do the walling in the strip foundation. We shall go to backfilling it. Then we shall cut away the soil, excess soil. Then we shall allow for pranking and starting supporting the foundation walls. So uh, in the strip foundation, uh, we shall get all these details. So for example, for the trench excavation, we shall, we shall uh, calculate the volume of soil that we shall excavate, then the rate of excavating per meter cubed. Then we shall go to blinding, we shall calculate the area of the concrete because that one is what we use in the SMS but you measure it in meter square then you multiply by the rate per meter square we go to strip foundation we find the volume of the concrete then the rate of doing concrete in a similar building per meter squared we go to walling we find the volume the area of the wall uh-huh then we multiply by 1200 we shall go to back filling of the trenches which we shall take, remember a trench usually is like this, it has a thickness of 600, we construct a wall of 200 in here in between, so this side, if it was 600, uh -huh, it should be equal, eh? so uh, if it was 600, then we have done a wall of 200, so this space should be refilled with soil, so that's why we are taking back feeding, it's 2 over 3, because this one will be 200, the wall 200, this one 200, 200, 2 over 3 of the volume of the this range. Then we multiply by the rate of uh, backfeeding per meter cubed. Then we shall cut away the soil. We shall say the soil that we shall cut away is this one that has been replaced by the wall. The soil that has been replaced by the wall. It is a third of the total volume of the trench. The cost of uh, cutting away the soil. We go for allowing the from pranking and starting that is supporting the foundation trenches we allow a sum of like a hundred the watering we allow like a hundred so once we get all these costs they will be for strip foundation approximate quantities is where we deal with elements by element when we are costing so after we find the cost for per element then we add the cost for all the elements we shall get the total cost of the building so that's why we are saying that the approximate quantities method is the most accurate method when it comes to approximate estimation so a quick recap for what we have done with approximate estimations when we are doing approximate estimations we have five methods first we have the functional unit method functional unit method is where we consider the number of functional units in a in a building for example if it is a classroom the number of desks so we shall relate a uh, one classroom head a hundred seats it costed this much so we want to build a, a 
another classroom which has a different capacity. So we will get the cost per desk, then we relate to the number of uh, desks that we want to construct for. Right, then we go to the floor area method. Floor area method, we see that we shall measure the area internally, then we shall compare the cost of a a building per meter squared then we shall take the cost of this building that we want to construct then we multiply by the cost per meter squared we get the cost of the building that the cubic unit method this one is said that it is usually uh, used commonly for houses uh, buildings with special features such as uh, very big roofs uh-huh minimal partitions such as churches and cinemas and this one we shall just calculate the, the volume of the of the house then we shall relate it to the cost of meet, per meter cubic of a similar building then we shall get the total cost of the building then we go to the story enclosure method whereby we say that uh, we shall consider all the areas in uh, separately the floors the roof and the walls then these ones we shall do some waiting waiting is multiplying by a factor so you remember those factors that we multiplied it and how we get the total area we multiply by the cost per unit area over another building that we had done story enclosure so we conclude with the approximate quantities which we have said uh, the building is broken down into elements then in upon upon the elements we go into details we mod, we calculate the cost for doing the details of work then once we get uh, the total that will be the composite rate per element then that way we are able to get the cost of the building so thanks so much for watching this video uh, we shall be doing more videos every day for you so that you can be able to revise for your exams in case you have any questions or area that you would want us to discuss you see now at least we have a board uh, making content will be much easier and faster uh, just write it in the comment section in case you have any question just write it in the section uh, comment section if you haven't subscribed kindly subscribe share our content to uh, your classmates uh, feel free to download uh, share it uh, with everyone that needs it invite them to our channel and we shall continue to make content for you we actually help you to revise for all the next papers that shall be in our reach so that you can be prepared for exams thanks so much for watching we love you have a good day